Okay, so Wakanda Forever. Uh, that was pretty good. Um, yeah. In terms of uh, just handling the situation they were dealt, doing a respectful job of it, and um, landing and nailing it. They did a pretty good job with that. I, I, all the stuff that I was kind of talking about when I saw that trailer of just like, okay, this movie is going to be like about loss. It's going to be about the mourning. They did a pretty good job with all that. Um, really, really liked that part, that, that stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to get into any spoilers. So I'll just, you know, but, but I'll say this. Like, uh, Angela Bassett fucking kills it. Super good. Um, she is... She is like... And it, and as, as she should, you know, like that's that's basically like a a nineties a black actor royalty in a way, you know. Mm -hmm. When she comes in for a role, you're like, oh shit, yeah, okay, that's that's Stella, that's Stella from Stella. How Stella got her groove back, <laughs> you so, know. I have a I have a bit of silly question, and I don't know if this is a spoiler because it's it's actually very confusing to me as somebody who has not really seen much of the trailers. And have not I have not been following Marvel's face for it all, like at all. Um, it's called Wakanda. For, is is it called Black Panther Wakanda Forever or Wakanda or just Wakanda Forever? It's called Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I don't know if this is a spoiler of a question, but um, is there a Black Panther in this movie? Uh, the trailer shows you a Black Panther. Okay. Is th is the who that is supposed to be a surprise? Yeah. Or. Okay, it is. Okay, so... The, tr the trailer shows you a Black Panther and doesn't tell you what's going on. All right, because I've been, I've been like, super confused about this. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the way they've been, they marketed been it. It's never been overtly stated as to, like, if there will be a replacement or not, or... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, said, they said they're not replacing Chadwick, is what they said, right? Okay. So there are re they're not recasting Chadwick, mm -hmm. is what, right? So it's like, yeah, fair. The impact of that would be, it, it was he, you know, it would be, yeah, it would, it would have been a bad call. Um, but everything around that, like at least in terms of like, okay, so what are they gonna do? They, that's what, that's what they kind of show you in the trailers is mm -hmm. like, there's gonna be something, but go see to find out what it is. <sighs> um, beyond that, um, you know, again, the, the it handles all that really well. Um, mm -hmm. The, <laughs> the I want to say like the first half of this movie is what it looks like when you nuke the Bechdel test. Like okay. the Bechdel yeah. test in shambles, like annihilated. Okay, <laughs> so kinda, like, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, it's, it's like, man, that's... Wait, the, when you say nuke it, do you mean like throw it in the trash in the... Or do you mean like destroy it as in a positive statement? Oh no, or passes like... it passes it so hard that okay, like nothing like the, the, comes the close. The phrasing of nuke it is actually a little unclear. Yeah, no, no, not 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 fails it. Like passes it so hard that nothing's come close. It's like mm -hmm. you've got you've got you know basically like Black Panthers. Uh, you got uh, T'Challa's family members yeah. just doing their thing. You know, talking about um, shit. Uh, yeah, and and you know. Um, uh, in the end, like you know, some of the some of the I, like my favorite character in, in in the first one was Mbaku, yeah, you know, uh, challenger to the throne, and he stays classic. Comes in, he's got the got some good one liners, you know, throwing in just proper, <laughs> just just proper insults with that accent, you know, mm -hmm. like calling someone out, bald headed woman, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, is great. Mbaku is wonderful. Um. But uh, there is a, there is a, 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 oh, and the other thing too is like, okay, be warned, this is a mm. two hour and 41 minute movie. Right. So it's long. Got it. It goes. So don't go in expecting an hour and 30 and you're out, you know? Yeah. Um, and it takes the time, obviously, to like go where it's going and do all the things. I didn't feel like... Um, didn't feel like there was a ton that like it feels like they trimmed a bunch it, there's a lot of shots where you're like oh that probably was really a whole in a two scene. hour 41 minute movie they f it feels like they trimmed a bunch <laughs> yeah no no uh, I'm serious. that's not sarcastic like i'm like even at that runtime it still feels like it got cut down yeah um there's a couple scenes where they cut to like a moment or a conversation where you're like oh that was probably a lot longer 
and then they mm-hmm. just kind of got to the the uh, they just you know snipped it to the core points and moved on um because you know this thing fucking runs um here's the thing about it and uh, you know this is i, I kind of touched on this a little bit when i saw dr strange as well but like now i'm now i'm really feeling it and punch mom as well um it is a good movie, but I am definitely officially MCU'd out. Um, it's like it is clear as day at this point that like all the stuff that starts to happen that's like the MCU stuff, which is pretty much when the action starts popping off, you know, and it goes down a certain way. Like you're wa- the moment the action starts happening, you're like, it's an MCU action scene. Here we go. And then the MCU things start to happen, and it's like, oh, man, I am not invested in this at all. I'm super yeah. invested in the conversation they were having 10 minutes before this fight started, you know? But now I'm like, yeah. I, I actually really liked Loki, and I think a big reason why I liked Loki is there are, like, four action scenes in that entire fucking like it, 12 episode series yeah they go a different way with loki though they, they were you know and i think that's gonna be the key going forward is like trying to like decouple themselves from that formula and just make something that like um tell a story that has characters that are interesting and like if you have good writing you don't have mm-hmm. to you know like in comics there was a while where the comic stories also got boring people got tired of uh what you know or what you'd call cape shit and yeah. then like interesting writers would come about and do things that would be like oh well that's fun it's something different you know uh there's a there's a wonderful comic where um uh wolverine is at a bar and he calls spider-man down because he's oh, like, i read that yeah yeah he's like he's, he's got a mission to go on you know and like what's the mission the logan fucking hang out with him for his birthday just have a drink and yeah. talk some shit it's like oh damn logan's got nobody to hang out with Actually, okay. come to think of it, when I was watching Moon Knight, I also felt the same. Every time his magic costume went on him, I was like, wow, I don't care about this at all. I want to go back to him being fucking nuts and being confused. Yeah. Like, that's way more fun. So this movie has that, right? It has that feeling where you're like, okay, we're following what's going on, all the Wakanda stuff. All right. And now they introduce uh, Namor, right? As Sue Storm's uh, maybe backup plan after Reed bites it. Oh, oh yeah, you know, like uh, Professor Fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> like Mr. Fanta- yeah. Um, no, Namor uh, shows up in this in this uh, situation, and um, so he's he like seems the- like a cool fish man. So you know what they do is um, the Submariner is a um, a a aztec war god right okay. is the vibe right so um instead so he's of Khan. yeah or or um um uh, uh fucking uh, what's the other one aquaman <laughs> no um anyway the the there's a, a um he instead of coming up looking like leonard nimoy with uh yeah. with the the with muscles uh, with the Hermes boots on, mm-hmm. um, you you got a yeah you got your your Kotal Khan type Aztec dude or, or, or you know in, in his in his when he's in his full vibe and doing everything for the most part he kind of is talking and taking it off and, and being a character you know and that's it, it's it's a it's an interesting mix up to the whole Atlantis sort of uh, uh, um, situation and um, you know not like going down in history is like. Um, one of the fucking strongest, craziest, most memorable, you know, like Marvel villains, but certainly like a good introduction to that character. And they do, he plays well enough as like, cause Namor's an asshole in yeah. Marvel. He's a hero, but he's an asshole. And then he's a villain. And then he's, you know, and you're like, what? Just man, <laughs> you so, know? And like, they're like, a... go ahead. I have a bit of a strange question because um, Black Panther had some problems, like particularly the CG and the action and all that stuff. Uh, but uh, Killmonger is like hands down the fucking best villain that the MCU had at any point because like some of it was he was talking sense 
and he was just wildly charismatic and he was also vegeta yeah um, he was also and, right <laughs> like yeah the, like like the best thing like Cole killmonger was such a fantastic <laughs> villain because killmonger like comes in right and you're like okay the like when when everyone saw black panther and like wakanda in the theaters and like the novelty of holy shit this crazy what if super techno africa existed yeah. right and you go oh my god that's so cool like and, and it's a very like uh, uh, um touching moment of like wow what like that's a that's a cool fantasy setting to to, to create yeah. and then while you're lost in that someone's going hey yo why don't you fucking why didn't you come help us back when we were getting our asses kicked no, four score and 20 years ago <laughs> where the fuck were you when we were all dying, man. So, um, Marvel. <laughs> like, so all, you know? all, a lot of a lot of villain fiction, or a lot of villain writing, has this problem. But like Marvel has had it at least twice. Yeah. Uh, did you watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier? No. Okay. So Falcon and the Winter Soldier has the exact same problem mm -hmm. that Killmonger has, and that is the villain has like better and more understandable mm -hmm. motives to the audience than the hero does mm -hmm. and thus the hero the the villain is like the sympathetic one and the one that the audience is starting to root for and then they realize that they have written the villain in a way that Too the compelling. audience is rooting for them and so they pull <laughs> the glass and they hit the big red button that says and then the villain said and that's why we're gonna kill everybody yeah 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 that and it and it's not a logical extension of what they were saying before in falcon and the winter soldier the villains are about um forced resettlement and forced repatriation of people who immigrated to countries when thanos did the bullshit mm -hmm. and how they're all locked in legal limbo and being turned into refugees mm -hmm. and you're like okay that makes sense that's a real problem and they're they're engaging in mostly non-violent terrorist acts that was a form of protest blah 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 and then they hit this turning point where they're like and then we're gonna kill everybody at the un because <sighs> and like yep. all of us all of a sudden their dialogue doesn't even make any sense because the original plot of the story was not about that it was about a disease that they had that they weren't getting medical treatment for okay and okay. so all it's all chopped and screwed and you're like wait why did they all just decide to, to stab every baby well unfortunately you haven't seen the last of that you know oh, like you great. know yeah right that 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 definitely does exist but in terms of the bit with killmonger it's like that's fantastic reasoning to be like, yo, assholes, we're dying out here, man. What are you doing? Right? Like, why and, did why did Wakanda not help Haiti in its overthrow of its slave state? And and why it's like, why Wakanda why not? Well, because of the vi vibranium, though, we got to protect the vibranium. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. No, we, we, you know. The vibranium. We can't let anyone know about the vibranium, guys. It's, it's Everybody sorry. knows about the vibranium. No, but we can't let them have it, though. Sorry. <laughs> you're like, you're living on fucking Mount Olympus while we're fucking getting our asses destroyed. We're getting beat, man. Come on. And that's, that's it, you know? So, like, when Killmonger walks up in there with that energy, you're like, yeah, he's not wrong. <laughs> he's great. He's a fantastic villain. You know, now did he need to fucking burn everything and and whatnot? No, but you get it, you get it. You know, um. So yes, exactly. That's the type of compelling shit uh, 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 that I love. Uh, yeah. So in any case, though, um, you know, you will. I like. It's funny because like seeing as this is the sequel, I remember I was kind of wondering, like, will we then see the fruits of like. Um, Wakanda starting to be less of a dick towards the rest of the world and it's like yeah okay kind of we, we got an outreach Here's center open. over here we're starting to help out over there we're being kind of reluctant but you're just like damn like is a Wakandan citizen as just as likely to drop a hard R <laughs> on a random, you know what I mean? On a random, like, lowborn compared to, like, anyone else back in the fucking 1600s, you know? <laughs> like, it's, you get, you get, you get, like, you want to see 
like hey guys like please show me that you're helping the world right please because yeah. this this the, the fantasy is like it it lasts for a second and then you go okay but really though what do we how we what's going on right anyway so i, I feel like this movie has really exemplified to me exactly how done I am with MCU because mm. uh, I felt no interest to actually watch it. Mm. Um, I just want to know what happened in it. Okay. Okay. Do you, do you like that? And yeah. that's how I am with comics. Yeah. I don't want to read comics. I just want somebody to tell you me. You want to know what cool the next step happened. of the thing is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And as a result, when I then went and went, okay, people are talking about the secret ending. What is it? And I go look at it and I go, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I don't care enough. Right. Anymore. So what I was able to ter determine from this is that like, it's a good movie, but the MCU-ness is just, we're at, we're at uh, franchise fatigue. We're at Assassin's Creed. We're at so, that point where damn it's, it, damn it's you got there first. It, we're at Assassin's Creed, man, and like you know, we've been and I've been enjoying the movie, and it's a you know the and and then it hits a moment where you're like, okay, first act, we got to go to an exotic location to do an exotic chase scene that leads to catch, yeah. catching either the device, Nemot, the the MacGuffin, or character that needs mm -hmm. to be setting up the the, th the second act. And uh, after that big old scene, you can kind of just feel the, oh, you've climbed the tower, Ubi points unlocked, <laughs> right? Ubi tower unlocked. You're like, all right, all right. And then back to the movie, you're like, cool, and we're in. And then it's gearing up for the next part, and you're like, okay, here we go. And, I mean, there's some stuff that happens where you're like, in the revelations that happen in the middle of the action scene, like, there's some stuff that's like, <sighs> Like, a new kind of hero joins the cast in a way that I'm kind of like, man, this is the most... this like the, uh, Someone that joins is kind of, like, emblematic of the formula. You, you can type it into the chat, with uh, for, uh, into the in Discord. So, like, I, you don't say it out loud, and I won't spoil it, but I'm curious as to what you're sure. describing. So I can go, oh, and then people can be frustrated that we didn't say it out loud. Uh... <laughs> uh right oh i saw that yeah, yeah okay yeah. so new new character new heroes what around a, and what a great way to be introduced to that which was the way i found out about that was uh, people being mad well it's just... how i saw that for the first time oh yeah were people mad about that okay people interesting. are very mad okay well you it, know I mean... the the usual people oh okay okay well in any case um yeah if you know if you know about you know if, i don't know if what the trailers have shown but like uh, you know a new hero helps out the the group at, at the end and um uh, the, like i just kind of am like that also is emblematic of mcu fatigue because I just the nature of like this type of character is yeah. I'm already tired of it, yeah. you know. So um, you know what else uh, really stands out about um, MCU fatigue, and I really felt that way during um, Moon Knight, uh, but I didn't mention it at the time. But now that I've I've engaged in more, I can feel it. Is like you're having these really serious scenes. That are like really like t attempting to have some kind of emotional gravitas, and then at the the three quarters point in the scene, because you're afraid that the audience might actually be feeling an emotion, you th you throw in a Whedon quip to to lighten the mood uh, so we can get back to the overall like haha <laughs> comics ah uh, they're ah uh, okay um, okay and the that was really bad in moon knight because moon knight is so serious and he's so fucking ill but when i when i caught so i watched fucking avengers and all that shit and i watched spider-man far from home and i caught clips of doctor strange you know every single time you bring up spider-man you don't need to make a joke about how he shoots webs out his asshole right there are four different gags across three movies about spider-man shooting webs out his ass okay yeah we get it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's a spider 
Um, but yeah, all this, all this to, to come comes back to like you know, um, yeah, the the it does interesting things. It's a good, like I said, it's a good movie. It just has its big climb, its big like MCU action climaxes that are unfortunately the weakest parts because we're so tired of them. Does and. Uh... Does a CGI Black Panther fight a bunch of goons? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure, absolutely. You bet your ass that happens. Yeah. Um, but um, no, and and uh, but but still, I I, I think um, it's it's you know if you, I mean if you like the first one certainly, and you want to mm-hmm. know more and you want to go more into that world and like follow it up and see where they're going with things, they do some interesting things, and uh, it's I, I I I did enjoy that, you know. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my little, you know, uh, without going into f- much further detail, that's where I'll leave it, uh, on Black Panther. 